have here is my Washburn FV5V. This was actually my first guitar ever. I still have it. We paid 75 bucks at a pawn shop, which fun fact, uh, I ended up working at that pawn shop um, just like four years later, five years later when I was 18. And the first thing I bought when I started working there was a Gibson Flying V that I eventually sold. But this was my first guitar ever. Um, it is a beat up piece of junk. That's why I got it for 75 bucks. So there's no back plate right now because I'm actually making a new one because it's larger than your average Strat size one. And it used to have a piece of a kitchen floor tile. That's how it came when I bought it, it was a piece of kitchen floor tile. Um, uh, see, um, yeah, normal cavity and another reason it was so super cheap you see this that's a crack that went um, that goes all the way through the body and it comes all the way down to um, pretty much the bridge pickup cavity I know it's dirty it's mostly just sits in the corner and I'll play it every now and then in the bridge it's got um, a humbucker out of a PRS SE, and then in the neck, it's got a passive EMG HZ. The original uh, Washburn pickups that were in it, I never really liked, so I uh, had the Washburn pickup in it till like probably six months ago. Whenever I found this in a box, I was like, Hey, I'm gonna put that in my V. So I actually like it, it was crucial in my early years, and uh, I used it in the first band I was ever in. Uh, called Amongst the Darkness. Please don't YouTube them because it's on there and it's horrifying how bad we were. Um, also, on the, the headstock, I always forget about this one. It's actually cracked. I think the this corner actually has broken off and someone glued it back and put a screw in to hold it. But uh, in the years I've had it, I've had it for probably 15, 16 years now. And since I've had it, I've never had a real problem with it. I play it. Um, stays in relatively good tune and a jam on it. So yeah, that's my Flying V. So up next we've got the um, my Fender Mexican Tele. Don't read the serial number, please. It's not yours, it's mine. Not, not that anyone would wanna steal this thing. You're gonna find out it's not special in any way. Um, jokes, jokes. Um, yeah, so I got my Flying V for my 13th birthday and then uh, for Christmas that year, my mom got me this. Um, I went to the local guitar store and really wanted this uh, double cut Ibanez. Don't know why I wanted it. I thought it was the coolest thing ever. Um, but they had sold them off because it was Christmas and that we were there in January because that's when I got my big my big Christmas present. And uh, this was sitting there, I think it was either pre-owned or something was wrong with it, but they uh, sold it to us for like 300 bucks. And this became the guitar I hated the most. It sat in a corner. I played all my cheap silver tones and first act and whatever I had over this every day. And one day my friend said, Oh, you own a Telecaster? Bring it up here and let me set it up and you'll never play anything else again. And he wasn't wrong. Um, after that, I played it for everything. I mean, everything. Um, but yeah, I've obviously changed some stuff on here. So um, what you got here is, this is actually a GFS hot rail for a Telecaster. And this is the G GFS Dream 180 for the neck. Um, normal tone and volume. I still got the original three-way in it that I have to clean all the time. And then uh, this is a coil tap split thing. I don't know. I always, I always want to call it a coil tap, but I know one is like technically correct and one is not. So you know what I mean? It makes these into single coils. Um, and the pit guard is actually, I made it myself. Um, since I work at a grocery store, the deli department has these uh has this brie cheese 
that comes in wooden circular boxes. And um, I started collecting them because I was like, hey, those are about the right thickness for pit guards. I'll, I'd like to give my give it a shot. So the one that was on here, whenever I added this humbucker size pickup here, um, actually didn't sit right. It would always be at an angle because it didn't sit right over the cavity. So I cut one out, remeasured it, got it in the right place. And this is all the natural wood. And I just used Casey's Gunstock Oil to finish it. Um, to give it the color. So yeah, that's the pit guard. Um, but yeah, nothing crazy about it. Just a standard Telecaster with a few mods. This is my favorite guitar. Uh, I love it. And all these dings on it are authentic too. Um, <laughs> there's, uh, I mean, chunks and stuff in the back of the neck. There's chunks taken out of the fretboard from where it's fallen and landed on screwdrivers. It's fallen off of stages. Um, I put my pick in this little gap in the wood a lot right here. Um, but yeah, every every nick and scratch, all the rust is uh, grade A road worn. So yeah, Mexican telly. So next we've got a Frankenstein guitar. It says, I love the 80s. Um, so the story here is um, when I was, oh, I guess a sophomore in high school, junior, senior, senior. I was a senior in high school. Um, this guitar shop opened up um, five minutes from the school and me and all my metalhead friends would hang out there after school and one day this guy brought by like half of his guitar collection and it was like all 80s Kramers and and uh, basements and all kinds of crazy cool vintage gear. And one of the things he brought in was literally just a pile of guitar parts. And there is this gold guitar with a black pit guard over in the corner. It um, did not have a, didn't, didn't have a bridge from what I remember. Maybe it did and I just replaced it. Um, but yeah, it was spray painted gold and it had a Kramer neck with it. So it was a great Kramer S310. Um, and so I I bought it, it was super cheap. I don't remember what I paid for, it, but it was basically nothing. Put it together and it turns out the truss rod was broken in the Kramer neck. Um, I went back to the guitar shop and he had a bunch of other parts. So this Squire neck was actually the Squire Strat neck was actually the correct scale length and everything. Um, I eyeballed it and got real lucky early on um, with it. So I bought this. It doesn't fit perfect in the pocket, but you know, um, I've never put shims in it and I've never had a problem, but um, it, it plays pretty well actually. I finally kind of got it dialed into where I like it. Um, so we can go. So I've got a Kramer body, I've got a Squire neck. This is an Ibanez floating trim that I've actually got blocked off. Um, there's some, uh, you might be able to see it, but there's some like rubber pieces in there that keep it from moving around because I really don't like floating tails. The bridge pickup's a DiMarzio to Super Distortion, I believe. I can't tell you where I got it, but uh, I think I think it was in a a black jazz master I had at one point that had a jazz pickup and a, a, a humbucker in the bridge. Um, the other two pickups, these colored colored ones are actually from a set of three where it was a cream one, a green one, and a pink one. And you'll see the cream one later, it'll make an appearance. Um, but they came in that set of three and I bought a new pit guard. The pit guard wasn't right. So I just ended up using this combination um, but this set was like 30 bucks for the three. You're going to find out real fast that I like cheap pickups. Uh, there's something about them that this mess with, mesh with me, not mess with me, mesh with me. Um, and then the tuners on it are actually, uh, ESP tuners for a reverse headstock guitar. So when I tune it, I actually have to go down to go up and up to go down. So... I don't think it's ever caused a problem for me, but I'm not going to say it never will because it might. Um, oh, and then the, my favorite is 
the neck plate is from an Electra guitar. Um, I couldn't find a neck plate that fit it. Went to another local guitar shop where I had another friend that worked. He goes, he looked right at it and said, oh, I bet you an Electra plate will fit that. And ran upstairs and uh, had, there was one in the toolbox. So he just brought it down and said, here you go. So yeah, that's all the parts. And then all these little switches you, we've got here, these are actually series parallels. So the, it actually flips the wiring. Um, normally humbuckers come in series wiring. So it's like the sat, it's basically like the signal travels through one coil and goes to the other one. So it's in series, you know, one after the other. And that's how the sound is processed. But when you put it in a parallel, it actually runs both of them at the same time. So it's almost like two single coil pickups sitting next to each other but they still hum cancel. So it's kind of like a coil split, coil tap thing happening. Um, so there's that. And then the five way is wired weird because I don't want to do anything like a Strat. Um, but sometimes I want the Strat. That's why I did the mod to my other guitar, which you should have already seen that video. If you have it, go back and watch it and like and subscribe. Uh, so yeah, series parallel, one for each pickup. And then my cats are being awful, but I love them. Uh, got bridge pickup, and then you've got bridge and neck, and then uh, middle position is just the middle pickup, and then third position is neck and middle, and the last position, sorry. Middle position is the neck. Fourth position is um, middle and neck, and the last position is middle. So yeah, that's uh, my Frankenstrat thing. Oh, I probably should talk about the paint job. So my roommate's fiance at the time uh, painted it for me. And actually, um, it's nicked off a little bit, but that green color is the original color. Um, I sanded off the gold paint and loved the way it looked with this um, beat up kind of relic green with black carbon under it. It's not even wood, it's made of like a black, uh, like a composite material. But my roommate's fiance really wanted to paint a guitar and she had done a pick guard before. So I was like, you know what? Here you go, go paint it. Um, whatever you're led to do, go for it. And this is what I got back. And the true story was at that time in um, right out of high school and I, I uh, really wanted a Van Halen signature guitar because I thought they just were super cool looking the way they were painted. And so, but she didn't know that. She, she had no idea. And this is what I got back. So it's kind of, Similar concept, just with colors that match my personality. So there we go. I put my initials on it because it's my custom shop kind of thing, but I call it Frankie. All right, so next we have a bit of a oddball. It's an SG. Just kidding. It's not an SG. It's something else. It's something scarier. Um, so... <laughs> Uh, a friend of mine had this guitar. I was working with him when I worked at the pawn shop and he didn't know what to do with it. And I looked at it and I said, oh, it's ugly in all the right ways. I want it. Do you want to trade? And we came to an agreement. I was the loser. I traded an ESP EC256, um, the road worn model. So it was like, it was cherry burst and it had all the, basically had a printed top make, to make it look road worn. And I really liked it, but the real loss was the fact that I had some Gibson humbuckers that I had put in it, um, Gibson 59s, and I really loved them. And to this day regret not taking the pickups out first. But it is what it is and I got to have something fun out of it. So. I will find a picture of what it looked like when I traded for it and I'll pop it in here somewhere, either full shot or in the corner, but um, you'll see it. And uh, part of the agreement was that his cousin who owned a body shop would, would powder coat it for me. So I said, do white and he powder coated it white and I got it back and they powder coated the neck and everything. And um, yeah, so originally it also had two in and out switches and on and off for each of the pickups and then tone and volume. And uh, it did not have a trim bar for it. And the bridge was actually um, 
a way different. It did not have any saddle adjustment. So I replaced the bridge. I did all kinds of stuff to this over the years. So most recently though, I, so I actually changed the tuners very early on. Once again, these are, what are these again? Uh, I can't read it. These are actually go to tuners, nice. Um, but they're for <laughs> reverse headstock once again. So down is up and up is down. Um, but that was one of the earliest things I did to it. Most recently, I bought a trim arm for Bigsby. So it's a little, little rigged up under there, but it works, it gets the job done. Um, and then I took the in and out switches out and put in a three-way selector and a series parallel switch. I have, I love switches. The more toggles, the cooler a guitar is. Um, <laughs> so of course, normally in a lot of single guitar, like uh, Dan Electros will come where they're wired in series when they're in middle position. So it's actually a little bit louder and it noise cancels. Um, but I have them just wired in parallel, but when you flip the switch, it'll put it in series. That way it offers just one more tone. Um, I don't actually play it a whole lot and I do have flat wounds on it actually. And I did the flat wounds so I could um, use this guy with it. Sometimes at church, um, little bow on electric is cool. So I'll actually just play it on the low strings I don't know if y'all could hear that, but that's what it is. Um, that's mostly what I use it for. Um, originally, I for years thought it was a, oh yeah, this is a good story. Sorry, uh, sidetrack. I was trying to drill through from the bridge to the cavity so I could run a ground line to the bridge but I ended up drilling through the back of the body and the drill bit broke off. So the drill bit's still in there. And I put this lovely tape marker on there to help me with that. And then there's a bunch of holes drilled in here from the original bridge. So I put Mr. Smiley mustache on there to cover it up. And then the pit guard, once again, is one that I I made and then stained red. I'll do it in this one. This has got a better camera lens. But it's got some cool figuring in there. Um, I thought it would be cool. So, yeah, and then I also sanded the paint off the neck and found out that it is this beautiful wood that I have no idea what it is because I still don't know what kind of guitar it is. Originally thought it was a version of a Tiesco Del Rey. And then one day I was looking up Tiesco Del Rey's and this guitar popped up and it was my guitar. And it was they called it a Johnny guitar. So it's some Japanese manufacturer um but yeah single coil gold foils it's actually a lot of fun to play and it makes people ask lots of questions um most often what is that and i just smile and tell a story so my johnny all right so up next we have a gretch it's another piece of vintage gear um, so the story here is this actually sat in a pawn shop near the college I went to and I would go in often and just pick it up and say, I want this, but it was, you know, 500 bucks. It was in college and I was like, there's no way I'm going to ever own it. Um, so I kept going and I'd go and I'd go and I'd go. And the guy who managed that location was actually a bass player in a local band and had played with my best friend's father in a band. And I... Um, I try, I, I finally one day was just like, Hey man, um, what's the lowest you'll take? Cause it's just sitting here and I want it. And he said, you know what? I want it to go to a good home because it's a very unique guitar. It's very special. And, uh, he's like, if you give me two fifty, you can have it original case and all. And I was, I said, you know, don't have the money, but I'll use some student loan money. And I bought it Uh bad decision. Don't buy gear with student loan money. Um, unless, unless it's like an emergency situation and you're a music student, I don't know. Um, but yeah, <laughs> so I bought it and, uh, when I first bought it, it had the ugliest pit guard on it in the world. And I tried to modify it to make it look more like the pictures I'd seen online. 
and I ruined it. I'm gonna show you some pictures. It looked terrible. But once again, I rescued myself and made one. This is actually made from some craft plywood from Hobby Lobby. Um, I traced out the original pit guard on it and um, adjusted from pictures I saw online to try to make it look like the original. And I feel like I did pretty good. I mean, I mean, y'all, y'all tell me. Um, I don't know. So yeah, so that's uh, that's that. The pickups in it once again are GFS Filtertrons. I really like GFS three-way toggle tone volume. Um, it's cool. It's got this really interesting neck joint on it too, um, but no neck plate. I think it looks really cool. Neck super thin. Um, it's got a zero fret. I can never decide which camera to use, but it's got a zero fret. Original tuners uh, made the neck plate uh, the the cover too because it had just a piece of plastic over it that was ugly. So. Made the truss rod cover as well. Still have the original pickups in a box mark, so I know where they're at. So um, still has all the original electronics in it. Uh, or like not in it, but you know, I saw the original electronics. But yeah, so that's my Gretsch BST. Um, I'm assuming it's a 2000, but I don't really know because I can't find a whole lot about them or I just don't research enough. So yeah, Gretsch BST. Okay, so I got another one from the pawn shop days. This is a K value leader. It's a good shot of this one. I think this is one of the coolest guitars I own. Completely hollow um, baseball bat neck, um, but it's got a cool story for a couple of reasons. So once again, I was working in the pawn shop and this dude brings this thing in and it is horrifying. Um, it's got one, it's covered, this, this pit guard had like this really shiny, uh, like almost metallic foil tape across the top of it. And then the same foil tape was wrapped around the back of the neck and across the fretboard. And um, it was screaming, please save me. And uh, the guy was wanting just to sell it. And I was like, look, man, I honestly shouldn't take it. It's got rust on it. I was like, I don't even know if it works or if it would be worth anything and uh, I said I will give you five dollars for it and he got upset and didn't want to take five bucks for it I know I'm terrible but it I should have said no altogether like we're talking I could have lost my job um, if I'd offered too much for it but I was like look I'll give you five bucks he agreed and so I gave him five bucks for it and I turned around and bought it for eight bucks and I didn't even know if it worked um, I didn't even try. I just was like, I want it, even if it's just a hanger. And um, made it, bought a freight box, brought it home, slapped some strings on it, peeled the tape off of it, told it I loved it, and um, plugged it in and it worked. Um, I replaced the bridge because the original bridge that was on it was too tall. And I don't know if it was the original bridge at all, but uh, I replaced it. And this is actually, like I said earlier, you'd see it. This is the original bridge from that white Johnny guitar. Um, I put this on there and it's the right height. It's not bolted down or anything, so it slides around. So that's how I intonate it. But yeah, it's got a cool selector pick uh, selector in it. It's actually got an off position and then you've kind of got a bridge, middle, neck, and then all three. Is that right? Bridge, middle, neck, all three. Yeah, not an off position, I lied. But I don't ever play this anywhere. If I'm like recording something that I think is gonna be fun, I'll plug it in and record some some dubs with it. But yeah, that's my K value leader. Okay, so I'm not holding the guitar yet because this is a big reveal for me because I love this guitar and it's a guitar I wanted so badly when I got it, so. Throughout high school, um, I just was always on a guitar center and a musician's friend and looking at guitars. And um, one time, the first time I ever went to guitar center, I played one of these and I was like, it's so ugly, it's beautiful. And uh, wanted it, but never had the money. And um, one day I was getting ready to move to Dallas and I was gonna work a production gig um, and 
it's like everything came together at once. But I did this production gig. My boss paid me extra money um, because I, you know I was moving. So it was like, hey, good luck. Here's some extra cash. Um, the day before that, I got a 20% off coupon for Guitar Center. And when I went, not Guitar Center, for Musician's Friend, and whenever I went to look at the qualifying gear, this bad boy was there and it was everything I had ever wanted. This is a Dan Electro 59 reissue with the new old stock pickups in it. So they re-released these because from my understanding, they were going through the warehouse and found a box of these lipstick pickups that had been missing for 15 years. So they've already aged and they slapped them in some uh, of these 59s and when I saw this guitar was only it was under 300 bucks with that coupon I just was like I don't have a choice I'm moving to a city where I know nobody I have nothing but I'm gonna buy this new old stock guitar so um yeah two two tones two volumes they're stacked um you know normal three-way toggle middle positions in uh, series instead of parallel. If I could tell these in parallel, these are in series or not. These are in series though. I had to order a special switch when I replaced this. I only one I could find and knew it was going to work with like $25, like 30 bucks after shipping. So I love this guitar. It's beautiful. I mean, look at this binding here. I don't know which camera is going to show up best, but it's beautiful um seafoam green color i love this thing so much um it it never disappoints me when i play it so dan electro 59. all right moving right along the next one i have here is a squire and this is the squire 51. um it's 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 another one of those hodgepodge guitars and part of the story with this one was I actually saw one of these in a pawn shop back home when I was in high school. No, I was out of high school. It's working at the pawn shop and I frequented all the pawn shops. So this was sitting, one of these was sitting in a pawn shop and I was like, dang, it's so ugly, it's beautiful. And uh, I didn't buy it, that was a mistake. Um, but I'm glad I didn't because all these years later, my wife bought it for me uh, for my birthday and I love it because it's the same neck profile as my Mexican Tele. And so I can play both of these in a set and not feel like I'm really changing anything other than tone, um, which is still pretty similar, but this one has a three-way selector knob. So you got bridge, middle, and neck. Originally it used to be just a chrome knob, but I put this chicken head knob on it so I could easily reach down and flip it like it's a switch. Um, and then I put this uh, other knob on it. It's got an abalone uh, top on it and it is push pull for split. These actually came standard with the push pull for the bridge and would have a single coil on the neck. And then here's that cream rail I was talking about that came in that set for that Frankenstein guitar. Um, I figured why not have two humbuckers when it's already got one in it. So I went ahead and put it in and I like it, it's fun. But yeah, it's, you know, it's like strap body with a telly neck and then the layout is supposed to look like a 59 base. I'll find a picture and show you. But basically it's just a 59 base version, but just a guitar. Um, the bridge is the only thing I want to mod on it because it loads through the back and you get, lot, you get too much tension on the string here. So I'm gonna I'm gonna mod that one day. I'm just waiting for the bridge I want to come into GFS because like every time I go to order it, I put it in my cart and it's like, sorry, we've already sold all these. And I'm like, then why'd you let me put it in my cart? Anyway, <laughs> and then the pit guard on it, standard is white. I made this gold one just to experiment with spray painting. It's not the best, but from really far away, no one can tell. So when you get up close that you can see this really bad glue joint in here, but yeah. Squire 51. So up next is my DIY offset. Macmillan guitars. Um, I 
Love this thing. It was the second guitar I ever built. The first one I ever made was a Telecaster kit and I hated it and sold it for 50 bucks. It was terrible. I wish I still had it because now I would know how to fix it. Signature, signature lick. GNC, baby. All right, anyway, so since I updated the switching in this, um, I've actually changed a couple of other things. So on the tuners now, it's got some Wilkinson locking tuners on there. And then I put some roller string trees on it and also put some roller saddles on it. I'm trying to decide how I like them. Bought some cheap stuff. Um, so yeah, um, not much to say. Gold foil humbuckers, three way toggle, bridge, neck and bridge neck and then adds the middle in, in the middle position here it adds the middle pickup to whatever position you're in and then in this last position it just middle pickup by itself so yeah that's my offset and uh just got one more to go all right last one it's funny this last one is another telecaster and um it's got once again, a special place in my heart. So my other Telecaster my mom bought for me. Um, this Telecaster was actually given to me by my father-in-law. Um, he's also a guitar player. And uh, he said, hey, you like that telly? And I said, yeah. And he goes, well, you can have it, it's yours. And I was like, uh, you're kidding me. So this is my American Standard Telly um 2008 um and it's in tobacco burst which it's another one of those things where it's like you've got to be kidding me this is my one of my favorite finishes on a telly or any guitar les paul you name it if it comes in a tobacco burst that's the winner that's the winner so once again telly there's not much to say about tellies because they are the best guitar and you can still fight me on that one this is future case in here this is Pixie. Um, I recorded that video a few weeks ago and now I'm here to say, hey, uh, hope you enjoyed uh, hearing about my guitar collection and uh, can't wait to see what we talk about in the next video. Bye. Yeah.